What's up guys? Mike here, Family Real TV. We're back at the Blackwater Refuge. We're going to get you guys a snakehead and we're going to catch it and then we're going to cook it. Check it out. Here we go, here we go. Get it, Dylan. What do you think it is? Catfish? Yeah. yeah it's not jumping out of the water. It's a snakehead just walking back. It's a snakehead. Walk it back, 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 walk it back. Woo. Nice, dude. Good job, Dylan. Nice job, man. That's a nice chunky one. Nice chunky one, dude. That was on the minnow. The so if you guys saw the last video, couldn't get any of them to bite on the minnows. Come on, buddy. Oh, wow. He almost hit me with a hook in the What's face, that? dude. Yeah, it's, it's a snakehead. Snake all right, hold him still. You got to keep the tension off the line for me, all right? I got him gripped. I got him gripped. Let me get the hook out. Yeah, these things are nasty, man. You got teeth? Yeah. See them teeth? Oh, you want to see them? They taste really good. You can make little nuggets out of them. Oh, oh, my gosh. oh. I'm gonna try oh no. <laughs> Look what he just did to the rig. Oh my gosh. Come on, man. Oh my god, dude. He broke the this line. thing is psychotic. He did? Oh my gosh, he did break the line. All right, well, that's good. He got himself off the hook, though. All right, thanks, bud. He looks tasty. Yeah, I don't want to get my hands too close to this thing's mouth. He man, does look really good, though. Yeah. They're really good to eat. Yeah, it was crazy. I looked over and I, the bobber was just completely gone and the line started rolling. So just watch them. Don't let them go in the water. So. Oh. <laughs> spicy. Oh. 4.65, guys. Yeah. So not oh. quite as big as last so, week. Oh, a little over half. It's still and a good fish, It's like four pounds, 11 ounces. Nice job, oh. Dylan. Oh, shoot. These things are crazy, man. Oh, my gosh. My fish grips are just completely destroyed now, guys. I need to get a new pair. Subscribe so that we can get monetized one day and I can get new gear. All right, time to measure in. So the last one about this size was 25 and a half, guys. He's 25 and a quarter, 25 and a quarter. Nice fish though. Gonna be good to eat this guy. Big boy. All right guys, that's it. That's a snakehead right there. Get a good look at it. Nice fish. Definitely was fighting hard. It didn't even seem like a snakehead, right? It seemed yeah, it was more, like a catfish. It was fighting more like a catfish until it got close and realized what was happening. And he started going nuts. Snapped my line. But broke that's awesome, man. Grips. He broke my fish grips. That's all right, though. I'll take it. You can bring anything you want for this. Hit that subscribe button. This is what we caught that snakehead on, guys. Just our top and bottom rig. He actually bit on this hook. Look, if you look at it, he bent that hook Here. sideways. Don't see that very often. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and fillet this fish while we're still here. That way we don't have to deal with the carcass it rotting in our trash or putting it in our freezer uh, waiting till the trash day. So we're going to show you what we're going to do to fillet it, and then we'll get going on the cooking in a minute. So we're going to start out. We're just going to go right behind this gill here. Okay. And then we're going to run right along this spine here. We're just going to get a cut in there. Can I do that? No. You're cutting it spine? Right next to the spine. I can't do it. I'm sorry, buddy. Not yet. You're not quite old enough, buddy. Well, can I just do like one little... And we'll just run this along there a couple times. Mm -hmm. Can I just do one... No. Okay. Sorry, bud. I'm just going to put some pressure down on the fish, guys, while I'm doing this part. Just blur everything, bro. Now, right when I get to about that part of the tail, I'm going to go ahead and just flip this up. I'm going to flip it right back. We're going to stop right about there. Ew, We're going to dive into the skin. We're just going to run the knife right along the skin here. I'm going to press down. you got to have that downward pressure. It's better if you're doing this in an elevated surface, but I have what I have here to work with, and that's it. I'm going to take my time, give it pressure down. helps really loosen that meat up and get it off the skin. You usually don't want to be doing this facing yourself, but I'm trying to give you guys a good view on the camera at the same time. We got most of the bones out of it. When we get back to the house, I'm gonna go through when I cut this up, get some of this belly meat and stuff off. But for now, that'll do for us to get home. We're gonna get this in the cooler. So we'll go ahead and do the other side now. Try to give you guys that camera view. Go ahead and just go right along the back of the spine again. Right along that edge. You might get some scales on your knife, guys. Just go ahead and wipe those right off. It'll make it a lot easier to cut. I'm just going to run the blade along that spine a couple times. And then once we feel good about that, push it right through. Mm. Pressure down, pressure down. That's all that really matters here. Yeah. And we'll just run it right along that, that fin right there. Yeah. All right, we're going to stop right before we get to the edge, guys. 
and flip it out. I saw it twitch. Did you? Yeah. It's That's just a reaction. reaction. Just gonna run through this, get this it's part done. Not alive. Here, you got a bag for that one. Rinse that one off. Put that one in its own bag. Oh my gosh. Oh, dude. That's disgusting. <laughs> Look at this kid. That's He's got snakehead armor. Oh my gosh. Dad. You're a trip, Drew. So that's it, guys. Here's our fillets. Let's take this to the kitchen. Back in the kitchen, so we're getting ready to cook these fish up. We're going to need a few things first. We need some flour, panko breadcrumbs, large eggs, vegetable oil for the frying pan, a couple bowls, garlic powder, sea salt, and black pepper. And obviously, we need our fish. All right, guys. First thing we're going to do here, we're going to rinse these fillets off. Rub your fingers all along it, get all that gunk off of it. All right, we'll place these on the cutting board. Uh -huh. All right, guys, so we're going to cook these into nuggets. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to check these fillets out. There's definitely some uh, ribs and stuff in here. Since we're cutting them into nuggets anyway, I'm just going to cut right along this red line here and just get that chunk of bones out of there. So just run a knife right through there, clean these fillets up, get that... The bones out of there, especially if you're feeding kids. They'll be really mad at you if you get a bunch of bony meat. I just cut this bloodline right out of this thing. Oh, that's what the rib is? I didn't know that. You got a couple ribs right here, guys. I'm just going to trim these off of this. We're going to go ahead and any skin that's still on the fillets, we're going to just go ahead and trim that off too. All right, guys, so these are the chunks we're working with here for the nuggets. We're just going to cut these into different size pieces, whatever size you want your nuggets to be. All right, guys, so we'll go ahead and put the leftover fish chunks that we're not using in a Ziploc bag. And you can either stick them in the trash like that, help keep the smell down, or you can freeze it until trash day. This is what we're working with from that one fish you just saw us catch. So we're going to put some flour. You look good. All right. We're going to put a couple <laughs> eggs in this other one. Three. All right, good. Now we're going to beat these eggs up. All right, I think we're good on that. Now in the last container, we're going to put our panko breadcrumbs. And these are the 4C breadcrumbs panko clean, guys. Yeah, dump those in there. All of them? Yep, Just dump that whole can out. We're going to go ahead and add our black pepper. I've seen people do this in the flour, but I like doing it in the breadcrumbs themselves. I just think it lasts better and adds more flavor to it. We're going to pepper this up. And it's up to you how much you really want to use. I want to get some flavor, not that much of it will actually stick. The sea salt, my favorite ingredient. Everything tastes better with sea salt. Then we're going to get a little garlic powder going on here too, guys. Oh. AKA liquid mayhem. We're just going to close this First and shake all that stuff around so it can even mix. I run this a little fast. We're going to take all the snake head, we're going to stick it in that flour. Now we're going to put them one by one in the egg, and then one by one back into this panko crumbs. Go ahead, Don, and start putting them in, yep. And we're going to put the lid on. Make sure it's nice and secure before you do this, guys, or else you're going to have flour all over your house. And we're going to go to shake. Okay, they're all in there. So Don, I'd say let's put three or four in the eggs. Make sure you get them completely submerged. And then you can put them over here in the panko crumbs. Flip them around. You want to shake that egg yolk off, guys. You're going to end up with a lot more of the crumbs than you probably want. But if you like a lot of breading, then leave as much egg on as you want. Keep them spread out as much as you can inside the panko bowl. You want two pairs of tongs for this, guys. You don't start cross-contaminating everything. We'll get them submerged real good. Make sure they're completely covered, all sides, in order to make sure that the crumbs stick real good. And then we want to make sure we drip that excess off. The kids don't like too much breading on theirs. If you like a lot of breading, you'll be fine without doing it that way. All right, guys, so they're on our breadcrumb pan now. We're going to go ahead and put the lid on, and we're going to just shake it up. So now it's time to go ahead and get the oven going. We'll get oil in the skillet. We're going to go ahead and set the stove to like medium high, and we're going to fill this up. Not that much, not that much. Keep going. A little more stuff. That should be good. We're going to let that heat up. And then we'll start cooking these things. So one at a time, Dylan, take it out, look at it, make sure it's got breading on it everywhere. And if it needs more, we're going to go ahead and put good? more on it, okay? All right, we're going to be very careful and gently press them in. We're just looking for these to get to like a golden brown color when they're cooking. Golden. Those went up pretty good here. Let them get another minute or so on this side and we'll turn them over. And... All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and turn these ones over. Cook the other side real quick. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely not quite there yet, but... I don't want to wait too long and burn them. I want it to be a little darker than this. Not too dark, or then they start getting really tough. Like a brown. Some people, you might like them a little tougher, guys. I don't. The kids don't. They sizzling. Looks good. Sizzling. It's making me hungry just looking at this, dude. <laughs> this first batch, I think, is ready. We got a nice little crispy golden brown going on on these. 
Looking good. We're going to go ahead and put these over here on a plate. We'll put them on the plate just to soak the extra grease out of the paper towel on it. That's our first little batch here. They're looking really good, actually. And it smells so good, guys. I wish you could smell it. You don't want to eat some right now. So we're going to go ahead and start the second batch. Oh, yeah. Make sure you rinse off your tongs after you touch the raw fish to after the cooked fish so you don't cross-contaminate anything. Make sure they're breaded, guys. Sometimes I'll stick them together when you do it like this and just shake them around in there. When they get stuck shake together, you end up with these bare spots. So if you want to make sure they're breaded, just go ahead and dip them back in the dry areas. You can throw some onions in the pan if you like onions, guys. Anything. You can throw some garlic in the pan with it. Give it a bowl. All right, there's batch number two. Sizzling oh, up. Yeah. And so this was one five, almost five pound fish, guys, and we got about 40, 50 nuggets out of this thing. All right, so we're good. Time to eat. Good? Yeah. Hot still? Yeah, a little hot. You're you good, though. I might have a little ketchup. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> These are really good, guys. Mm-hmm, really good. They're a lot less crunchy than the ones that you made that one night. Yeah. Yeah, I overcooked them last time. Everybody was mad at me. Good. All that right. That's a lot better. Yeah, it actually tastes good. I can't taste the garlic powder, guys, so definitely don't be scared to put too much in that mix. A little more sea salt on there, guys. I'll go with ketchup. You, know, you yeah. can't ever really have enough sea salt on some fish. Don't like it, They're real good. What do you think, Drew? Yeah. Are they good? Yeah. Amazing. All right, guys, those are really good. I'm telling you, if these kids say it's good, it's got to be good because they won't eat anything. Fun times. Definitely try that recipe. It's pretty easy to make. I think you'll like it. Thanks for checking out our reel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you never miss... <laughs> Ha 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 ha!